I've started planning for the, the tool tray. And the first thing I did was I cut the bottom of the tool tray. Um, and I left it a little uh, loose. All right, let me see if I can get the camera on there. You can see those joints. About a sixteenth of an inch there. Another sixteenth inch back here between the two sides that you can't really see from there. Uh, the reason I did that was because you don't want to be fighting that tool tray in and out every time you, you need to pull it out, right? So uh, we can make it a, uh, a, a tighter fit, but there's just no need to do it. Um, and the reason I cut the bottom first, because once I get that in there, I know, uh, I know a few things, right? So I verified my two inch uh, height for the sides. That's going to leave me just a fraction below the, um, the uh, top of the lid. So when everything closed, I got no interference from the tool tray. Um, and it's going to be something of a template now that I'll use to, uh, to cut the sides and the divider down the tool tray. I've, I've already got the size. I don't have to measure everything a thousand times. Uh, I made an executive decision off camera. Uh, I thought the half inch for the tool tray would be too fat. Um, so I went and built some wood down to five sixteenths. I think that's a good... Um, a good thickness. It'll look fine in there. This is more just pleasing to the eye or, or what you feel is right or wrong. Uh, I kind of like uh, the look of 5 16 I might even have gotten down to a quarter, but um, again, we're nailing this together. So I've got to take the joinery <clears throat> into consideration. And we will be doing butt joints um, on this and not rabbit joints like we did on the other piece. And the reason is, um, <clears throat> as we bring these pieces together, I've got to nail that through here into this board, and I've only got five sixteenths. So if I cut a rabbit on this board, I would be down to, oh man, you know, less than a quarter of an inch, and it's a little, a little dicey driving a nail down there and getting it to, to grab without uh, splitting or, or popping out the other side. So, so five sixteenths and butt joints is the is the answer. Um, now what we got to do is get Two pieces of stock that are the same length as the bottom tray, one, two. Then between those two pieces, and they'll go here and here. And then between those two pieces, we need ends that will fit like that. And we'll measure them off after we cut the um, after we cut the long pieces. So let's get to cutting the long pieces. Uh, we're not going to measure. Um, whenever you can mark your cuts off of the piece. Um, without measuring, you're always better off. You're always going to get a better fit. And, you know, that combined with doing all your cuts with one setting, with the same setting, is going to get you squared up and, 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 and tighter and, and cleaner uh, every time. So let's go set up to make the cuts for the long pieces of the sides of the tray. Okay, here's my setup. So I want my long pieces of the sides of the tray to be exactly the length of the bottom that I've already fitted. So if I take my uh, bottom, slide it over to the table saw blade, and set the stop, which I've already done, I've determined that length, the length from here to here. I don't have to measure it, right? So now I can take my stop, and I know that board is going to be exactly the length of this piece once I make the cut. Hopefully that made sense. So let's get that done now. I'll show you that cut. First thing I'm going to do is square an end because I want to make sure I got a 90 degree cut there. And I have a side that is now, I'll do it on this side so you can see it better, a side that is now exactly the length of the bottom. And I'll repeat that for the other side, uh, get those two set up, 
then we'll make the two end pieces. And remember, we're going to need a divider down the middle or approximately in the middle on here. We'll have to have to play with that for a little bit. So let me cut the other long piece, and then we'll go set up and we'll figure out how we'd like to cut the um, the side pieces. Well, we've got our two uh, uh, longer pieces here, and now I need ends to place in between them that need to be about that long. So. So how do we, 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 we get them exactly right? Well, we don't measure. First thing I do is check and make sure one end of this is square, and that is perfectly square. And I want to make it fit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine that this piece needs to be a length that is equal to the width of the bottom minus these two, and then it will fit perfectly. So what I'm going to do is flush these two to the back of the board. A quick uh, quick tip, if you, if you want to make things exact, your finger, you can kind of feel it, but um, take one of these setup boxes or the back of a, a good size square or something nice and straight and flat and register that there. Push these up against them. Now take your square edge. Is this the one I checked? That's that. That's the good square cut edge. Run it here. Everything's tight. And make a knife mark on the bottom here. That knife mark, which I'm going to strengthen so I don't lose it, I'll put a pencil line on it. So you can see it. that that mark is going to be the right length to get me between these two boards. So let me go over to the table saw. So I'll cut that, and then I will come back. So while I was at the table saw um, cutting these two end pieces, I also cut using the same technique, by the way, same layout mark technique. I cut this center piece that we'll use uh, in here. And once that's um, glued up and nailed, then I'll be able to use that as a way to lift the, the, the tool tray out of the box. These thin boards are going to go together with uh, small brads. And uh, I do want to pre-drill for them though because it's, it's narrow stock and um, it's thin. And I'm, I'm using here is um, just a, a little uh, ratcheting pin vise that you can use to drill small holes like this. And you simply put your, your vise there and ratchet down on it and it will work its way through. And you can start your holes that way for your brads. Hope you guys are seeing that okay. I think you get the picture. A couple more, I've already done the other board. I'm only going through one board here. I will use these locating holes to do the next board underneath it. And we'll get that all set up right now and I'll be right back. Yeah, so I've, I've kind of taped this thing back up and now I'm ready to get uh, this first joint uh, connected. So the first thing I want to do is get some glue on there. That's pretty wet, but that's okay. It's in green. I want to be careful. I want to make sure there's plenty of glue under there. Now what I think I'll do, because I'm thinking as I go here, I think I'll tape this together nice and even. Twisted, let's get that over. Let's get that nice and even. And it is. And now I'm going to continue those holes. Am I happy with that? That can go a little more. This can go a 
this way just a tad. I'm not happy with that. That's better. Now I can take this little pin drill. Take my one inch brad, cross my fingers. split out. It's a wonderful thing. Do the next one. Do the same thing on this side. I'm now going to tack the uh, bottom of the tool tray to the frame, uh, having secured all four pieces together with at least two nails. I'll probably come back and put a third in there, but I want to get this nice and squared up before the glue dries. I am comfortable putting this 16 gauge uh, brad right through because I have plywood on the um, I have plywood on the top, which is not going to split, and I'm a good inch plus into the pine, so I'm not too worried about that splitting out. So I'm going to tap right through without drilling. And the idea is to get one corner square. The, 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 the square plywood bottom is going to help us square up the, uh, the frame. So now we'll come to this end. We'll get the corner just right on this side and we'll put in a brad Everything's good and square, I say. But let's give it the test and drop it in. Perfect. There's our tool tray. I'm going to use the same technique to um, drive the brads into the dividing strip here. And I've already got it nailed in on the bottom. You can see I've made center line straight, so I'm going to line up. I want to make sure that the center divider is parallel. Uh, so I'm going to use the setup block again. I have to get it in this way. And just see the bottom needs to shoot over a little bit. Get that lined up like so. Take my little fancy drill here. Drill through the pilot hole into the center divider. And now I'm ready for my 16 gauge, one inch brad. Well, that certainly doesn't look good. Make sure I've got that hole straight. I think it was just a brad. And the hole appears to be straight. I don't know why that brad was going crooked. That's better. I'm still aligned in the front. We'll get that hole all the way through.
Okay. Off camera, I went and uh, I, I made a uh, a top for the uh, for the lid uh, here, and uh, I didn't show you that. It's just a rip and a uh, a cross cut uh, from that that stock I left uh, and dedicated to the lid. Um, but one thing you notice, it's a little long and it's a little wide. I'm leaving a sixteenth inch overhang around the uh, entire uh, uh, top, uh, and reason being is you know we'll affix this top to the to to the lid portion. And then when everything's dry, we'll take a flush trim router and we'll go around the whole thing and we'll bring those two surfaces uh, flush that way. This way, if there's the slightest of irregularities um, between the frame and the top, um, no one will be the wiser. Um, again, even a thousandth of an inch or something will create a shadow line. You don't want to have that. Uh, one, one thing of note is that, um, you know, there's that inclusion that uh, we talked about uh, when I was planing. And here it is on the other side. So I think we're going to use this side, right? I think we're going to use the side that shows the least. Uh, why not? The other thing is, this lid is half inch thick here. Uh, I think that's too thick visually. I only want to reveal a quarter inch of the lid uh, around here. I don't want it to look that bulky. Um, but I need a half inch. And the reason I need a half inch is because I have to screw a handle into the top of the box and I want that, that screw to have some purchase, so I want it to screw into the half inch stock. I think you can see here, uh, let's see if I can get this on the camera, that if I put a screw in here, uh, it's going to offset just short of a half inch. So that will give me a good bite into the top of the box, um, and uh, I'll get a good, uh, good strong handle on here, but uh, I only want to reveal that quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the table saw, and I'm going to create a quarter inch rabbit all the way around uh, the four sides so that when I turn that back over this lid will recess down that quarter of an inch. Uh, I've gone and removed my, my table saw uh, uh, blade and the, uh, the insert for that. Uh, I've gotten out my uh, dado insert and uh, my table saw wrench and I've got my dado set here and we'll see about setting that up. So the dado set, if you're not familiar, is just a stack of blades. The inner and outer blades are one eighth thick kerfs. And then you put cutters in between that make the thickness that you desire. Now, we know that that, that box is a half inch uh, uh, thick, so we would want a half inch rabbit uh, to recess the lid, but remember I added a sixteenth. So, um, you know, we're going to have to go 9 sixteenths in order to get that, um, that rabbit. So I think what we'll do is we'll set up the dado for 5 eighths, give us a little extra room, and I'll show you how we can adjust for that. So I'm going to take an 8 inch, eight inch uh, cutter, a second 1 eighth, and a third 1 eighth cutter. Most dado sets come with uh, assortments. As you go down in this box, there are different thicknesses so that you can come up with the exact thickness you want up to three quarters with this particular set. And they give you a neat little um, guide here that tells you which set of cutters, uh, when combined, make up which uh, width of cut for you. So, so let's get our, our dado set uh, into the table saw. I'm going to st stick this right here if it'll fit. It doesn't get nicked up. Put that aside. I'm going to move the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see how is. Uh, I think you can see right about, right about there. Give me a little zoomy zoom. Get a little closer. And there you go. There's the guts of the table. So what I'm going to do is put these. Little weed cutters aside. And we're going to put this blade in. I long ago washed off the markings on these blades um, so I have them marked uh, what's out and what's in. So this is going to be facing out on the outside of the stack. And I can see that the teeth are cutting here. So I'm going to put that one in first. I'm going to start stacking in 
these wing cutters. Build up the thickness. And if you're already using a data set, you know this already, but uh, I thought I'd go over for those of you who have not yet invested in a data set and were curious as to how they worked and, and how you set them up. All right, so I'm going to try to stagger these wing cutters uh, so that they are uh, not overlapping each other. Try to keep the blade in, in balance. Now I've got the outer side of this blade with the teeth cutting in the right direction. I'll put that on. And I'll make sure that none of these teeth are, are binding against each other. I want to try to offset them as best we can. Get that one first. Now we can get this middle one. A little tricky, but you'll get you get the idea. You don't want any teeth uh, interfering with each other like that. All right, let's put this on. Let's hope this isn't the part where I lose the nut and have to take the table saw apart. Uh, reverse thread. Get that started carefully. I got all kind of fingers on it because I don't want to lose that down there, that's for sure. Reverse thread, almost dropped it. I'm working at a slightly different angle than I might because I try not to block you guys. I have a little trouble with this. Come on now. So that's on. I've got this dedicated stick here that I use as a hold back. And then we want to just stuck, snug up that arbor nut. Okay, and we have our data stock set up. I'm going to lower the blade. Clear out this gook a little bit. Let me get a brush. We want this to set. Uh, we want this to set flush. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want this. Uh, we don't want this plate resting up on all this junk. So we'll get that off there. Like so, and we'll get this in here, like so, nice and flush. Okay, then what we're going to do is bring our fence over. Get this stuff out of the way. Let's see if you guys can see this. Okay, so this is a sacrificial fence that I'm using. I'm going to line it a little better than that. Get it about there. And it's just a board that clamps to my fence. I don't know if you guys have the best angle. I'll move you in a second. Uh, I think you can see that, but you'll get a better view from this side if I go to handheld. So, what that is, is it's just a board that I clamp to my fence and it has a recess in it. So, my um, dado cutter is 5 8 I need to bury a 16th inch of that under the fence to make my cut. So I can adjust my fence accordingly now and get the uh, get the right uh, depth of cut, and it just clamps on to the uh, to the table saw fence. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and set the height of that uh, dado set so it's a quarter inch, and then I'm going to set the exposure from the fence to my nine sixteenths, and uh, I'll be right back. Let me show you what I've done here. I've I've set the um, I've set the distance from the fence. At a strong 9 16 um, out from the edge. I'm going to have a little wiggle room to, 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 to get that in there. I've set the depth of cut. Again, highest point is the arbor right there. I've set my depth of cut for a quarter inch. 
And uh, I ran a couple of tests on this test board right here to check. And I'm a strong 9 16 there. And I'm exactly a quarter inch there. So I know my rabbit is going to be what I'd like it to do. Now all we have to do is make the cuts. I've already made the two cuts on the end grain. Um, rule of thumb, <coughs> when you're making uh, a cut all around all four sides of the board, do the end grain first. When the, when the cut comes off the saw, you will sometimes get tear out right here. I didn't uh, get any, but you sometimes will. Um, and if that's the case, when you, when you run the next side here, you'll, you'll cut out that tear out, right? Same goes with routing uh, as well. So let's turn the table saw and we'll make these two uh, passes and finish the routes. around the entire uh, perimeter now and uh, with any luck at all we'll take that back to the box and it'll fit like a glove if not <coughs> excuse me we'll come back we'll move the fence a little bit we'll make the rabbit a little bigger and we'll fix it that way but let's see how it looks and back at the box let's see what we got looks like I'm good across the width of the box but a little uh, need to remove a little more to get this end to fit. Uh, boy, that's a that's that's not even a 30 seconds. So what we're going to do is we'll just take that off with a uh, with a plane. There's no need to, uh, to to go back to the saw with that. All right, what I've got here is a is a, is a shoulder plane, uh, and uh, I'm just going to take a uh, a smidge off of this uh, shoulder here. Notice I'm not going to off that end because I'll tear it out. I would usually turn myself around while I turn the plane around so you could see. And that's how I'm going to address this end. This, I know you can't see this, but I'm just going to try in case i got to take a little more. Uh, we got the width is right. A little more. A little more. Let's take it off the other side here. We don't want to lose our overhang. That's a go. Get the camera over here so you can see. But our lid has uh, has fit. And I've got a good overhang on all four sides. Nice tight fit. So that's a much more aesthetically pleasing 
uh, reveal for that lid, that quarter inch. Just looks nice. Um, not a big bulky half inch uh, reveal. But again, as I said, I've still got the half inch of bite for my screws when I put that on. All right, let's see if we can put that together. Well, I glued the top to the top's frame. And uh, I, you know what, I pulled the clamps off before I showed you guys how I did that, so uh, no big deal. I just had a bead of glue on the frame, dropped the top in, and I had six of these spring clamps just uh, working around it like that uh, to hold it in place. That was a few hours ago, so now it's, uh, that glue's dry and, and we're good to go. All right, so the next uh, step in the process is let's get rid of this overhang. If you recall, I said I'm going to leave this proud all the way around and then flush trim it back uh, for a good fit. And my original idea was to use one of these flush trim bits on a router. And if you could see there, that, that bearing would follow the frame and then this, this cutter would cut the, uh, the top here flush to the frame and we'd zip around and do it. But you know what? It makes so much darn dust that I, I changed my mind. Um, we don't want dust and noise right now. So I'm gonna do this with a hand plane. Uh, it, it's not going to take very long at all, and uh, let me set up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that right now. Okay, I took these, these, uh, the end grain down off, off camera, sorry about that, but I, I have to plane from both sides so I don't blow out the ends, and uh, uh, it's just not good with my back to the camera like that. Keep blocking the shot. So now I'm going to take care of this, this long grain on this side, um, and just have to uh, go at it. A little at a time. I'm going to get down to some uh, squeeze out glue. So we'll hear that coming off soon. If you hear the sound change, that's what that is. Actually, that worked quite well. One side, let's do the other. And you can see where it's um, getting close and, and if you've got a high spot or a low spot. So I'm a little high here, so I won't start on the edge. I'll just knock that piece off there. And I should be pretty much even again. I don't know if you saw here, I, I picked up some wood from here. That means I'm good. I didn't pick it up here, so I'm going to start here. Now I'm grabbing wood from both sides of the cut, so I know I'm, I'm flush. A little bit up there. And I think I'll even out the rest of the board. I can see a low spot there. I still see a low spot there. And now I'm, I'm good all the way through. All right, I think I'm gonna clean up this side too while I'm, while I'm thinking about it. I, I do have a low spot right there. I might as well take another pass. These are minuscule passes, so. I'm not too worried about changing the dimensions of the box by any means. We're taking off uh, literally a thousandths of an inch at a time, uh, so uh, won't be noticeable. All right, so this is all flushed up. I think the whole box needs a sanding, and uh, then we can think about uh, hinging the top. So I'll take care of the sanding off camera, because who needs to see that? And uh, then I'll get back, and we'll start laying out some hinges for this. I gave everything a, a, a light sanding just to clean up any, any errant marks and just uh, make sure everything was good and it is. I set the nails. Um, so now what I've gone and done is I've clamped the lid to the box in the orientation that it's going to be hinged. And I didn't sand off my little note to remind me about the groove side because that plexiglass has to set in uh, right here uh, 
when I when when, when the lid is open or closed. Um, so I got that uh, done, and I'm just kind of figuring out where I want my hinges. So for now, let's say, uh, let's see what two and a half inches looks like. Put me there. Three inches would put me there. I think I like three inches a little better. So we'll set that one at three. Yeah. Must be magnetized. Quite a little magnetism is on there. Three inches. Three inches. Stand back and look at it. Well, that looks about right to me. So, what I'm going to do is take a knife. My hand just set where I want it. Square it up to the face of the box. I'm going to put a pencil, knife, mark. I'm going to see my knife mark here. And a knife mark here. Okay, and I can see them. So I get you a little bit closer to what I'm doing here. but what the heck. Alright, so now we'll get a square and I'll take that knife line that I just made try not to block your view and I'll take it across both sides of the box. I'll take the knife on the other side of the hinge right there and when you're laying out you always put your, your knife or your pencil on the mark and slide the square to it. You don't try to get the square even with the mark. Uh, you use, use the knife or the pencil. To do it. And I'll mark this one. You can bear with me. I'm working in an awkward position here. All right. And now uh, I know the exact place in my hinges. My my ends of my box all line up. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to evacuate a mortise um, for these hinges uh, to lay in. So these these hinges have to be recessed um, into those slots, okay? Um, and, and we've got a bit of a uh, gap to fill too. These hinges when they close, there's still a good sixteenth of an inch between them, so we have to mortise this about twice the thickness of the uh, hinge in order for it to um, close flush to the box. But I'll show you that when we do it. I'm going to go ahead uh, off camera because I could definitely not do this one with you guys in, in the way. I'll go off camera and I'll mortise the uh, the other side of this box and uh, right over here I was pointing to but you guys are off camera. I'm going to put the other hinge right here, same process, mark it out and then uh, I'll come back and we'll we'll cut those mortises for the hinge. Okay what I have here is something called a router plane. Uh, and this is a small router plane, pretty small. And um, it, it's simply a, a flat uh, surface with a, a cutter, kind of like a tooth uh, that comes out there. And I've got that set for uh, more than the thickness of the plane, I'm sorry, more than the thickness of the hinge leaf, but not twice the thickness. I'm not sure how thick I have to make these um, leaves to get them to come to get those these mortises to get the hinges to come together there's where they become parallel to each other so uh, I'm just gonna cut them about one and a half leaf thicknesses on both sides we'll put them in we'll see how the lid closes if I have to come back and deepen the mortise uh, I will but uh, we need a starting point so let, let's do that now I can simply take the tooth of this plane and start working in from the side, all right? Because I'm establishing the depth of this mortise from this tooth. By the way, there's about a million ways to do this. You could do a straight chisel. We can get a router out and set the, the depth of cut. But you know, for in pine, for a couple of pieces like this, I'm gonna come in from the other side and just score that depth mark right there with this tool. Come back, hit it again, strengthen it a little deeper. I'm 
I'm going right to the line. Come back and double down on this side a little bit. You can see it coming up already. Hope you guys can see this okay. I'm going to take this knife marker and I'm going to strengthen it with a nice sharp chisel. It's pine, the chisel sharp. I don't have to hit it with a mallet. If this was a hardwood, I would take a mallet to it. I like to go in like this and just establish that shoulder real quick before I continue on. I'm working backwards here. Bear with me. I think I can do this without knocking the whole box out. So what I just did was I just kind of strengthened that shoulder. So now I think I'll be a little more aggressive with this plane and take out some serious stock like so. Come back from the other side. Take out some stock. I don't have to worry because the depth of this tooth is set so I can't go too far. I can only go to the depth of that tooth and there I have it. All right, just clean this up a little bit with the chisel, get in there a little angle I like to do, get in there and get that fuzz, get in this side a little angle, get in there get that fuzz. Okay, so now I've got my hinge um, mortise set uh, for one half of the box here. Okay, and I, I can feel that's deeper that mortise is deeper than the, the, the hinge leaf. Um, we'll do the same thing on the lid now, and then we'll, we'll, we'll check it out, and we'll see how that wants to um, lay. I think it's still gonna have to get deeper um, based on what I'm seeing there, but we'll, uh, we'll play with it, and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, I've already done the other side over here. You can see, I'm gonna take that same technique to the uh, lid, and um, We'll see how we we'll see how we come out. All right, and we have our first design flaw. I knew I wasn't going to get through this project without something going wrong, and uh, look what happened. I've got a groove here. I can't cut a hinge mortise uh, on a groove. That's not going to work. You can't do that. There's nowhere to go here. We got a hollow. All right, so what we have to do is uh, I'm going to remove this stock right here. I'll saw that down till it's flush with this. Saw this down, then I'll chisel out this remaining wood, and I'm going to have to put in a fill block, um, which will look something just like this, except it'll go all the way across. Um, so that um, I have something to screw the hinge to that is, is secure. When I put the uh, piece of plexiglass in, all right, and the plexiglass is going to drop in here, all right, I'm going to have to have a cutout in the plexiglass so it spans that solid block I put in there uh, and is able to uh, still, still drop into this, this groove on either side of the hinges. So got some work to do. Um, I think that the best way to cut this piece out is to use a uh, marking gauge and set it to depth there. So that gauge is now uh, at the depth of this slot. I think you can see, oh, this, this tore out, we gotta glue that back to the depth of that slot, okay? So I'm gonna come on this side. And reference here, and reference here where I've got some solid wood. Okay, now I should be able to, so I keep you guys in frame here. I should be able to put a straight edge across, let me go this way. So I can work better. Should be able to put a straight edge across this, like so, and mark 
that line. You have to do the same thing on the other side. And now I don't know if you guys will be able to see this okay, but I'm going to take a saw, a joiner saw, and I'm going to cut down to that line on both sides. I'll cut down to that line on this side. Okay. Now I should be able to get a chisel in here. Take, take this out. It's getting ready to go. Okay. So I got that out. I'm gonna set an I'm gonna set a, another one of these, mark the depth over here, and then I'll bring this all flush. Alright, I'm gonna go do that on the other hinge side and then uh, find uh, uh, make up a block and uh, be right back. Okay, so let's get to fixing some boo-boos. Uh, repairing our error here. So a couple things. One is uh, when, because I didn't realize that groove was under there, I, was, I laid on the chisel too hard and I actually cracked this piece of wood. So first thing to do is to repair that by getting some glue in that gap. And to do that, first you need some glue. And then we're just going to hold that open. I hope you guys can see this. I'm going to get this glue on this spatula and just work it in there. Now I am going to wind up with glue uh, in my groove, unfortunately, where the plexiglass goes. And I can do something about that, but not a lot. So let me show you what's going on here. Okay, so we've got good glue in there. I got some glue in there. What I've done is I've at least laid some tape in the bottom half of the groove to account for some of the glue that might wind up in that crack. Not much I can do with the stuff that's going to be on the underside of my repair because um, well, this is what it is, right? That's the, uh, that's the nature of it. So uh, I'll go in there and clean out that groove. I'll cut that, any glue that hardens in there, I'll cut that with a, a scalpel and we'll We'll make it good. Let me pull this joint together where I made the repair with some tape. And if we let that dry overnight, that, that will be good as new. Alright, and we got one of our problems solved. You never get through a project without something like this, unfortunately. So, this glue like that. Now what I've done is I've taken, prepared a piece of stock. Make some force in that. Right. That will fit in there. When I clamp that, it will leave the resulting gap, hopefully, for this hinge. Alright, so it will effectively be pre-mortise. Now, I'm a little deeper than the hinge itself, just like the other side, um, but I can always trim this, right? So I can't, it's, well I can add wood, I just did. It's hard to add wood though, so if I'm going to miss, um, you know, the old saying in engineering and uh, this sort of thing is error to the side of least consequence. So if I'm going to be, be, have an error here, it's going to be that this mortise isn't thick enough yet, deep enough yet, and I'll have to uh, address that. So let me get a little glue in here. glue on 
here. Okay, we'll, we'll put this together carefully like that. And I'll get some pressure on that in a minute, but first, make sure you can see this. And you can, let me get some, uh, some glue on the second filler piece and get that in place. Same thing, I approximate it, the required mortise depth for the hinge there, approximate it, and I can go back in and refine it tomorrow when this glue is dry. To hold that clamp, and let me zoom you out here a little bit so that uh, there's enough room to see. What I'm gonna do now is use a spring clamp pressure on these guys. <laughs> it's really a two-hand squeeze, I gotta tell you. Okay, now those are clamped up and uh, that's it for tonight we'll have to let that dry really really well uh, come back uh, in the morning and uh, flush it up sand it up make it look good and then set those hinges on the box and on the lid and I think we're going to have to try them out I don't think we're going to close right the first time I think there's going to be too much of a gap on the back hinge. So if I have too much of a gap on this back hinge, let me get this off of here. Make sure I got you in frame. If I put this lid on and I've got too much of a gap on the back hinge, then the lid is going to tilt down and, and the gap is going to be narrow here and then widen as you come to the back. So the trick is to get this gap in the back just right and that's got everything to do with the depth of these uh, mortises that we're working on right now and we'll just you know work on them till we get them right not, not a problem uh should have bought better hinges though i'll tell you that much all right so i'm going to wrap it for now and when we come back we'll we'll be ready to uh hinge this lid mm -hmm.